Hello everyone, my name is Greg with Linbit, and today we're going to be discussing Linbit's software-defined storage technology. So let's get into an agenda. This webinar should be between 20 and 25 minutes. We're going to do a brief overview about who Limbit is and what we do. We're going to review DRBD and its core features. For those of you who aren't familiar with DRBD, feel free to do a little bit of research as well on your own time. It's a cool piece of software and it has a, has a lot of features. We're going to get into some new DRBD features that some of you may not be familiar with if you are familiar with the older versions of DRBD. And we'll be doing a demo where we roll out a four server DRBD cluster with 20 resources in seven minutes. Afterwards, we'll do a quick Q&A. So if you have any questions throughout this webinar, feel free to ask them in the chat box and we'll go ahead and answer those as we progress through the presentation or at the end if we haven't gotten to them yet. And so first, let's dive into who is Limbit. Limbit has two offices, one in Vienna, Austria, and one in Portland, Oregon. And we're an open source development company. We develop DRBD, the data replication tool for Linux. The surrounding technologies, CoroSync, Pacemaker, Booth, um, and, and today I'm going to introduce LinStore, are also all a part of the Limbit product portfolio. We service and support those. And we've been around for about 20 years, so our business has been built around building and supporting mission-critical storage infrastructures for some of the biggest and smallest uh, companies in the world. So it's really, really cool because we were the company who really brought this high availability clustering software to the masses. Um, back in 2001, if you were looking at rolling out a, a storage cluster, I, basically your only option was to do a SAN or a NAS or some other sort of proprietary technology. Um, our current CEO and lead developer, Philip Reisner, decided to build a code which would allow you to replicate data between two standard Linux servers without the need to pay a, a vendor proprietary license fees or vendor lock-in and things like that. And so now, uh, Limbit has moved from focusing on HA only to disaster recovery across long distances to now cloud virtualization and container environments because that seems to be where the future is going. And so we wanna make sure that our software, which has been used so many times uh, for HA use cases, will still be able to be used in these cloud and container environments that everyone's so excited about. And so let's drill down into DRBD quickly. So DRBD is just a block device, like virtual block device. Anything that you write to DRBD will be replicated to a secondary server, either synchronously or asynchronously. And the benefit to doing replication at the block level is that it's really high performance because the pings don't need to go all the way up through the application stack. And so we can get really efficient network replication between two standard Linux servers, which can keep up with basically any application or file system that sits on top. And so at the block level, you get a little bit of flexibility that you don't get with um, replication technologies at the, at the software layer otherwise. You can put any file system on top of DRBD, whether that be a normal file system like XFS or EXT4, or you can put a clustered file system on top so that you can access both servers at the same time. And you can do this with uh, any application that, that you want to write with and multiple applications at the same time. It's, it's really, really versatile and that's why people find it so useful. But there's one big downside to the old DRBD software and that's there was a limit of two, or two to four nodes. You, you couldn't replicate and keep scaling out um, in an unlimited fashion like you might need to now with a cloud or virtualization environment. And so in order to move, sorry, in order to make DRBD work, in these sorts of environments, we had to develop some new features. So the old business challenge, you see on the left, or the top rather, top left here. So we had high cost SANs and NASs, vendor lock-in. Let's figure out how we can fix these things with a low cost data replication tool and failover built into Linux. Let's make it simple and let's make it high performance. And now the current challenge is cloud container environments. How do we create a container native solution cloud solution where we have, again, low cost, high performance, but also scalable 
data replication on top of Linux without those license fees. And there are a couple of benefits that you get as you move kind of forward through the timeline of, of, of how storage was progressing. You have the traditional storage, which does a couple of things really well, and Limbit came in and said, well, we can do some of those things, but at the time, we weren't very high performance. Um, then Software Defined Storage came in and said, well, we can do, you know, we can do a lot of this stuff. We can scale, we can be flexible, affordable. I mean, we have everything, except for generally speaking, the, the, you can't run a, a really high performance high IO database on top of your cloud or container environment because it's, it's not going to perform well. Well, Limbit, with our history of, of working in these software-based technologies with a focus on resiliency, we said, well, at the block level, we can get really good performance. Let's, uh, let's focus on that. And so with our SDS software, that's really the niche that we're going to hit is that we want you to be able to use any application inside your environment and still get the resiliency you need. And so those new features I mentioned are right on the board here. We have this auto promote feature, which allows DRBD to uh, allows Limbit rather to create drivers for DRBD, and so we have drivers into OpenStack, Open Nebula, uh, Proxmox, Kubernetes, OpenShift, and Docker. And auto promote allowed us to write that code in hundreds of lines instead of thousands. I mean, it was it was a, a game changer for us. And the benefit to the user with AutoPromote is if, if uh, a user is trying to access a passive resource um, and no one is trying to access the active resource, the system will just automatically promote the passive to primary and give the user access to the server when they need it. And so the active passive replication that is traditional with DRBD allows for real high performance and then this AutoPromote feature allows you to still have access to the storage when you need it really cool combination in a cloud environment. So the second thing is that we need to be able to scale out beyond just a two node to four node cluster. And so we've reworked the code in order to be able to replicate in pools of storage up to thousands of nodes. And we can replicate up to 31 replicas of each individual resource, extremely scalable. And we also created a diskless attach mode. And this is pretty cool. What you can do is you can separate out storage and compute from your Linux servers. And so you can say, I'm storing all of my data on, on these 10 servers, uh, but I want you know, 300, 400 compute nodes. And we can install DRB on each of the systems, and those compute nodes can run uh, compute, storage can run in storage. And that way, you don't have to be wasting your hardware, um, which is super, super cool. We, we've done a couple of trials with with this diskless mode and, and people seem to really like it. So it's great for, for scaling. We also have transport abstraction. So if you're using Linux, you're probably used to the TCP transport protocol. And when you're replicating data, the TCP protocol is a, limited, a, a limiting factor in that. And so we have support for RDMA, uh, Rocky, and all of these high performance and FinnaBand really fast networks so that we can keep up and even beat these proprietary solutions because the proprietary solutions box you into requirements whereas every other week every other month you know Mellanox and these other companies are coming out with faster and faster networks and Limbit wants to make sure that our software works well and, and as fast as these these networking technologies and lastly today we're going to be introducing LinStore LinStore is kind of the key here to scaling out a large storage cluster. And if you were an admin for DRBD in the past, you'd know that the cluster configuration files for a, a cluster larger than four nodes would be pretty insane. It would take you days. Um, and with LinStore, it's, it's not even hours, it's minutes. And that's what we're going to show you today. It allows you to deploy and manage and delete resources extremely easily in a large server cluster, um, and, and I'm really excited to show you that today. So if you look at the challenges that Limbit was trying to face in the past compared to now, on the left-hand side, you have this HA technology that was great for NFS, iSCSI, even you know virtualization platforms, KVM, um, databases, file servers, any pretty much any application. 
And now we're bringing that resilient storage mindset to the cloud and we're saying, well, how do we, how do we maintain the level of resiliency that we always had in the past, but still back these container environments, these cloud environments? Um, and, and we think that we're in a really good position to do that. And the way that we do that is with a new architecture approach. So instead of just doing a four node server cluster, a two node server cluster, what we can do now is we can scale out kind of this graphic on any number of nodes that you'd like, where on this slide you see node one, two, three, and four. Inside each node you see these boxes which represent volumes. So we have volume A, B, C, D, and E. And each of these are different in size and they have a different number of replicas. And so say you're, you're looking at deploying volume B and you say, I need a three gigabyte volume replicated twice over my server uh, cluster. You tell Linstore, just go find the space for me and hit go. Linstore will go out, find where the available space is in that four node server cluster and, and put the volume there, which is awesome, right? You don't have to do any of that manual legwork. Now, if a node dies, say node four just is kaput, let's, let's say it's a motherboard outage, it's not coming back, you let the system know that that node isn't just down for maintenance, that node is gone. And the system can go rebalance all of the replicas for you across the three node server cluster. Now let's say you replace node four with a new server, it's completely blank, there's nothing on it. You can tell the system to rebalance and use that available storage, and now it will rebalance based on the most efficient way to, to balance those, those volumes. And so this sort of mechanism really allows us to scale well with larger infrastructures, uh, all, all using just standard Linux servers. And so from a technical perspective, the way that we do this is we have a control and we have a satellite structure. And so if you look inside the cloud here, you have a control node. And if you were doing testing, you could just do one control node. You don't need a cluster of control nodes. Um, but since that the control nodes hold your cluster configuration files, you don't want those to go down. So we generally recommend in production that you have a cluster of control nodes with a bunch of satellite nodes connecting to those control nodes. And really the only difference is those cluster configuration files between satellite and control. And so you don't really have to worry about it after initial setup. This is just kind of a, a visual representation of what that would look like. But this is the way that we're able to scale in, in the way that we do, uh, which, is, which is really cool and, and new to us. So. And that begs the question, what platforms do you support? I mentioned these before, and we have the logos here to your right, and the question is why, right? Why do you support these, these different architectures? Well, we began supporting OpenStack when it became a, a large project that everyone seemed to be hopping on board with, because we wanted to be an option for the storage backend in your OpenStack cluster for high performance applications running in your cloud. And the same goes for OpenNebula and Proxmox. And now, with containers taking off here in the US and, and around the world, we want to provide persistent storage for, again, your, your high-performance containerized applications. And so we have plugins which allow you to simply use DRBD as your backend storage for Kubernetes and OpenShift and Docker. And that way you don't have to pay for proprietary storage on the backside um, if you're just testing or, or doing something of that sort. And if you want full support, Limit offers that. You have an enterprise open source solution to, to your problem, which is, which is great. And, and something that we haven't mentioned yet is that you don't actually need one of these cloud platforms in order to use LimStore or Limit SDS. We imagine that a lot of our users are just going to want to scale out their DRBD clusters a little bit more until it becomes larger and larger and larger and requires kind of an SDS setup. And so we can support large DRBD pools for whatever applications you want. We don't have to plug into a front end. We just have that ability if you want it. And so I mentioned this briefly before and I have it on a slide here. After your initial cluster setup, you simply tell LinStore the number of volumes, the volume size, the replica assignment, and LinStore will go out and find that space for you. 
pretty cool. So as a summary, for DRBD version 9 and WinStore, we have this new auto-promote feature, which allows us to plug into your favorite cloud and virtualization container environments. We can scale out to thousands of servers with multiple replicas, up to 31 of, of each individual volume. We have a diskless attach mode, which allows us to separate out storage and compute servers. And we can do transport abstraction so that we can replicate super fast underneath your infrastructure. And lastly, we're going to demonstrate for you now LinStore, where we can easily deploy volumes, manage volumes, and delete volumes. So without further ado, I'll start the demo now, and we'll be doing that 20-node deployment in under seven minutes here shortly. Hello there, Matt with Linbit here. I'm going to show you a demonstration today of Linbit's new LinStore software. For those of you familiar with Dearbity Manage, this will be a a replacement technology for that piece of software in the sense that it will be managing your storage nodes in a storage cluster and deploying resources and managing configurations between those systems. What you see so far is just us starting up the LinStore control and satellite processes on our four nodes here. Roto is going to be our controller node, so we've started both the controller and satellite. You see that there. The difference here is that the controller will manage the configurations for the cluster, while the satellites will get their configurations from the controller node. So Frodo will be our controller here, and we're going to add him to the to the LinStore cluster as a combined type node. Again, just because of the controller and satellite services running on on Frodo and we'll go through and add the remaining three nodes as the default type which would be a satellite node. Satellite nodes again are only providing storage to the storage cluster and not managing any configurations or anything like that. These steps should be somewhat familiar if you are familiar with DRBD Manage. We'll add Marion and then we'll list out our cluster nodes to make sure that we all are participating. And there's all four nodes with Frodo standing out as the combined node type. Next we'll go into defining our storage pool. Tierity Manage was really only for DRBD devices and LinStore will be able to manage many more types of devices. So creating the storage definitions is a little more complicated but it's for good reason. So we first define the storage pool definition and then we will assign nodes to that storage pool. And we'll go through and declare this for all four nodes, but the, the, the things to note are we're using LVM as the back end and we're naming it DRBD pool. So there is a volume group created called DRBD pool on all four nodes once these commands get pushed out. And we'll list out our storage pool. And we see that all four nodes are participating in the pool. So now we can go ahead and start creating our resources. We'll, we'll just use this for loop here to create 20 resources across all four nodes. For each resource, we have to create a resource definition, finding specifics to, to each of those resources. and just kind of roll with the defaults here, but then we'll create the volume definition. This specifies how many volumes, if 
if more than one would would be participating in each of the resources. Finally, we create the resource inside of the DRBD pool that we previously created and assign it to a node. So we've already gone through 20 resources on all four nodes. We'll list them out. And you know, obviously there's a, there's a lot of them. So this isn't a very efficient way to look at our resources. We'll, we'll open up DRBD top. This will give us a perspective of all our resources from this node. We'll want to check each of the four nodes to make sure that our resources are are all there. And since we sent all 20 to all nodes, we should see 20 of them there. Those red marks are just pointing out that the devices aren't aren't in sync yet. We're still we're still syncing everything up. So those are the quote unquote danger score. which helps us rank the order in which to display your resources. Different things go into that, go into that score, like the state of the DRBD device and how, how, how out of sync that device is. But we've already picked a block device just to wrap up this demonstration. We'll create a file system on it, put some test data on it, and just see that our data is being replicated. We don't have to wait for those full syncs to complete. That's been a feature of DRBD for as long as I can remember. All our replicated writes are taking precedence and you know happening happening side by side with with that resync traffic. So uh, we're just going to put a date and our name from this node onto our DRBD device, which we've mounted at MNT. That's what the data looks like. We'll flip back over to Legolas and see that it's there. And one of the things you should notice is we're not issuing any DRBD ADM ups or primaries or secondaries to move our DRBD device around. We're just relying on DRBD9's auto promote feature to, to manage that for us. That, that makes everything uh, a lot smoother, makes it act like a normal old block device as opposed to some you know, special block device. And we'll cat out our data, see that it's there, and that'll wrap up this demonstration. Thanks for watching. Okay, and there is the full demo. Thank you, Matt, for that. And so we have a couple of questions that came up throughout the demo. Uh, and the first one is, what is Limbit SDS in terms of DRBD and, and all of the surrounding technologies? And the answer is, Limbit SDS is the combination of DRBD and LinStore, and we recommend that be used anytime the cluster configuration would be too complicated to do manually. Um, so that, that's that combination. I, I should also mention that there's a software called DRBD Manage, which is similar to LinStore and works for OpenStack and OpenNebula environments right now. Um, if it's included as the default, go ahead and use that, and Limbit supports both. Uh, everything moving forward will be moving towards that, that LinStore software. Uh, someone else asked, is, is there an API for LinStore? And the answer is yeah. Uh, we have an API internally here at Linbit. Feel free to reach out to us and we'll go ahead and get that in your hands. It's changing frequently right now and so we don't want to put it up online and then have things change um, too, too quickly for you. So. Like I said, get in touch with us and, and we'll give you access to the API so that you can allow Linsor to work with your software. Someone else asked, where do I get it? And I believe they're referring to both DRBD and Linsor, or I guess I can explain both here. Um, they're both available on GitHub. So you can go on to GitHub and if you want to test, uh, feel free to pull it down from there. Or if you want the certified version, the supported option through Linbit, we have certified binaries available to our support clients, so you can always reach out to us and get the, the certified version directly through us. Someone else asked, how do I contribute? Um, I mentioned that it's available up on GitHub, uh, LinSource specifically. You can download the source software, submit patches, and Libbit has a, a mailing list, an IRC channel, so we have a dev mailing list, a user mailing list, and an announcement mailing list. Um, join those, get involved. Um, hop on IRC and we have two channels we're active in, hashtag DRBD and hashtag 
uh, cluster labs, both for um, you know both for for DRBD and the surrounding technologies, and our, our engineers are in those channels on Freenode, um, pop in there for us. And I think we're about out of time here, so I'm going to go ahead and leave all of the other questions to email. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to check the links at the bottom of the video once we post this up on YouTube or to reach out to us, and we're happy to, to talk to you guys more. So thanks, and have a good day.